Hey, it's Renee here, the producer of the Reefer Madness podcast. I just wanted to take a moment here and apologize for uh, s- some of the sound quality on uh, some of the audio. Um, in these COVID times, it's forced us to uh, try recording from different locations with different mediums and... Um, by my ear, not very optimal. I prefer that we could all be in the studio and hopefully that'll happen again soon. So uh, some of the audio is going to sound um, less than perfect. Um, Please bear with us. I apologize for that. Um, Anyway, here comes another great episode of Reefer Madness, the podcast. It's Reefer Madness, the podcast with Trevor and Kirk. Kirk, we're back. Hey, Trevor, how's it going? Good. So if you're not watching the video of this, Kirk has a fancy new outfit on. Kirk, uh, who are you wearing this uh, summer season? (laughs) Who am I wearing? Um, I am wearing uh, clinical blues, I guess. Um, I'm up up north right now. I'm working. um, With COVID, we have to wear a mask with our patient care. And because I'm an old surgical nurse, if I'm wearing a mask, I wear a hat. So I just got off shift and I took the mask off so you could see my lovely face. And uh, I just haven't taken the hat off because <clears throat> I've got night hair. I've been up all night. So <laughs> you look lovely and hopefully your medevac goes smoothly. Um, at, at this end, uh, COVID wise, uh, I have now had a daughter graduate from high school. I saw that. Congratulations, man. Well, it's really her thing, but um, let's go to Hello MD. And I'm going to state up front their name is Hello MD. I just re listened to the interview. I use WebMD a lot. We're going to get, maybe we'll try to get Renee to fix that because they're, it's like, you know, their name is Frank and I kept calling them George. The company is Hello MD and I will try to say Hello MD as much as I can to try to make right for the interview when I kept calling them by the wrong name. Uh, Kurt, before this, had you heard anything about Hello MD? No, I, I must admit I have not heard about Hello MD. Um, I found it an interesting interview. I had to listen to it a couple times. Uh, to get into it and to understand the services they were providing. And and again, I apologize because when I'm working, my brain is pretty much clinically and uh, and not necessarily on the peripheral stuff. But I, I listened to it again before the uh, start of this, this interview we were going to have together, and I went back to their... Uh, to their uh, web page. Essentially, what I what I see is I see a middleman. Is this correct? They're they're providing a service to people, uh, so that I'm thinking people of rural Canada could use this service, and they're providing a service linking doctors and producers or suppliers, medical medical cannabis suppliers together. Yeah. Um, no, I think you've pretty much covered it. Like they started in the U.S. Um, they said, you know, they saw a lot of stigma around people wanting to get medical cannabis. So they were going to use a sort of a uh, web-based only way to get uh, uh, people who can prescribe. Prescribers, you know, whether they're nurse practitioners or physicians or whoever, hooked up with patients, get them that prescription, or up here it's called medical authorization, but prescription, and get that to the licensed producer, and then the licensed producer gets it, the, the cannabis to the, to the patient. And one of the things I was really interested, and they've been doing that, I think they said uh, five years, so 2015, uh, but one of the parts, and we do get into it, that I thought it was really interesting is now they are doing a specific seniors focus service, like really trying to, if you were somebody who's 75 years old and said, you know, my buddy says that cannabis might help my sore knee, but I don't know anything about anything. How do I get involved with it? How does this happen? They will, they will help you out. Well, that's what I thought. As I, as I started picking up um, on, on the service they provide, they are perfect for rural Canadians. I, I had to laugh at the end at the end of the um, interview. Um, him thinking Thunder Bay is northern Canada. Um, and well, I, I tried to be nice about that. <laughs> and, and of course, I guess in Ontario, in in you know in the center of the center of the world, Toronto, Thunder Bay is pretty north. But um, I know from my my practice, I've had 
I've had people who have approached me online emails. I live in northern Alberta um, and there are no practitioners near me. Uh, the next the next person is, you know, an hour and a half down the highway in the next town. Now I'm thinking, hello MD, provide that service. I mean if I'm in if I'm in my, uh, Lacklevish, Alberta. We did a we did an episode when I went and visited my in-laws in Lacklevish, Alberta. As far as I know, there's not a cannabis doctor in Lacklevish, Alberta. So the residents of Lacklevish, Alberta, could call down the MD. Hello, M MD, and they now have linked to a cannabis doctor. They can do it by telephone or or video link. And not only that. They help the person fill in the the paperwork for the cannabis and submit it to the uh, suppliers, the producers, or I guess the pharmacies. Yeah, it, it, in, in this yes, absolutely. And in this case, that's and I, I do believe through my poking around, Hello MD does partner with other licensed producers. But in this interview, we focus mainly on the, their their. Um, they're working relationship with uh, medical can or cannabis by shoppers, shoppers drug marts, sort of medical cannabis division, which is the which is a licensed producer. They don't happen to produce; they buy from others, but that's neither here nor there. So, cannabis by shoppers is a is is a licensed producer. So, you go from Hello MD to cannabis by shoppers, and then gets mailed to the patient. Right, but they're they're helping the patient with all the paperwork. They're helping them, but I imagine from my experience, once you've seen your med your medical doctor for your prescription, the medical doctor uh, fills out their side of the paperwork, sends it to the dispensary, the producer, and then the producer sends you a registration. So you still have to register with the producer. What I'm seeing here. Um, Hello MD provides service. They'll help you do the paperwork to link you to the to the dispensary. Also, yes, that's that's my understanding. Yes, yeah. So they're they're taking away all the paperwork, which is my God, wonderful, especially for seniors. They, they take the they take the the work out of it. Here's a question, though. <clears throat> I um, as we've often talked, how we both stumble into cannabis conversations all the time. I'm working with. Um, I'm working with uh, a doctor up here in, in, in northern Manitoba right now who, um, who is not cannapositive. Uh, he does not like cannabis as medicine, does not consider cannabis as medicine. We had some very interesting, very frank discussions, and, and um, it was fun. It was, it, I like having those conversations and, and asking questions about, well, you know, something like gabapentin. How would you prescribe, you know, prescribe gabapentin without enough research? Uh, and of course, he says, "Well, I don't like gabapentin." Oh, okay, well, good for you, <laughs> you know. But he 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 raised he raised a question to me about prescribing doctors and cannabis, and I didn't know this. And he said that the only person that can prescribe cannabis for you is your family doctor. It's about the relationship. So now he's telling me that from the College of Physicians perspective, another physician, such as a cannabis doctor, such as Hello MD, if they're not your family practitioner, according to the college, they aren't licensed to prescribe you cannabis. And I and I and I said this. And I said, well, that's interesting because it's happening. So how's it happening? I think maybe, we, we, well, we should get to Larry soon, but, you know, maybe this is a call to college because just to play devil's advocate, you know, in my, in my clinic, the clinic I work next to, you know, you see your family doctor for most things, but your family doctor's away, busy, whatever. We go to the walking clinic and they write basically anything and they're not your family doctor they might not know you from a hole in the ground but you know you needed care they write you a prescription i'm not seeing a whole lot of difference between that and what uh hello md is doing that's a that's a good that's a good argument i'll have to pose that one when i when i see my my doc friend my colleague um but i also was thinking about when we were interviewed dr shelley turner back in um 
the episode of Healing Communities, she made the comment that she sees herself as a specialist, right? So therefore, when I, when, when you go, come see her, she's offering a specialty as a cannabis doctor, as you would see your, you know, your orthopod or your other specialty doctors. But in those cases, you've been referred to by your family doctor. In this case, your family doctor is not referring you to the Hello MD. Yeah, no, good question. If if we've got any listeners out there who who are uh, associated with the college, and maybe even on the college, I, I would love to hear the actual college explanation for this. Well, again, we've always said we're never without we're never without opportunity um, to, to 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 have interviews. Um, I like this interview. Um, uh, like I said, though, for me, and again, it was probably Headspace. I had to listen to it a couple times um, because when you when you posted me the interview, I started listening to it, and I was putzing around the the apartment here and doing some stuff, and I was thinking, well, okay, is is Larry a doctor? He's the vice president of the organization. L- Larry Larry seems to be a business guy, and I mean this in the nicest possible way. But you will hear Larry use words like onboarding. You know, you and I see patients and talk to people. Larry onboards. I'm only teasing a little bit, Larry. Let's listen to Larry, and we'll talk a little bit more about his interview afterwards. First, thank you for um, having me today, Trevor. Um, A little bit of background. uh, Hello, MD is a company that uh, we created back in 2015, actually, which is about 100 years in cannabis years. And um, um, at the time, uh, we were based only in California, and um, we wanted to bring something to market to help those who were interested in using cannabis for medical or wellness purposes, an opportunity where they could feel comfortable that um, they would meet with a practitioner um, securely and discreetly uh, and be educated and understand um, you know, medical cannabis a little bit more. Back then, the stigma was way stronger than it is today. So all of those things were critically important. Um, Over the years, um, we really continued uh, on that trajectory, which was to build a brand and a set of services that helped more and more people feel open and comfortable to to learn and and hopefully onboard and succeed uh, in integrating medical cannabis in the way that they um, in the way that they uh, look after themselves or optimize um, their health and, 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 and life. Um, a few years ago, we uh, chose to enter the Canadian market. Um, I'm uh, uh, born and raised in Montreal, Quebec, and so Canada is obviously dear to me. And while it felt far to some of my partners, it felt like a very natural extension, and particularly how avant-garde Canada has been as it relates to cannabis as a whole. And particularly, um, ironically, when uh, it became clear that Canada would have two very clear swim lanes, medical and recreational, um, the market became very interesting to us. And so um, we entered uh, providing pretty much similar services, which is to help companies like Shoppers Drug Mart and others offer a um, a full service where uh, they can send their patients for the opportunity to connect with an educated and experienced practitioner online from the comfort of their home or otherwise um, and talk about uh, their symptoms and uh, potentially illnesses that they think perhaps medical cannabis could be a fit for and um, have an opportunity for that practitioner to discuss that with them, uh, decide whether they feel it's the right thing and provide them some you know, prescriptive advice in terms of a, a treatment plan. And so that, that, that that's at a very high level, uh, the business, I would say we're really a technology business that wraps around, you know, patient services uh, to, to, uh, to, to provide these experiences for patients in Canada. No, that, that's great. So if I was a, uh, a patient, a customer, it, are all your services sort of online slash web, webcams? Yes. So that, that's, yes. so, so there's um, no physical hey, office question. anywhere. Yeah, there's no, in fact, we've never had uh, any physical locations. And, you know, up until last year and certainly more more recently since the COVID crisis, virtual health was, was a bit of a, um, uh, you know, it, it was on the sidelines a little bit. It was a very niche um, part of healthcare. In fact, globally, it's estimated that before COVID, you know, 
five to maybe eight percent of total healthcare interactions in the U.S. and Canada took place digitally or online or on the web or on a on a webcam. And um, during the crisis, as much as 80% of those same interactions were done digitally. So um, we, we've always been telehealth digital focused. Uh, we've fought the good fight for many years in provinces and states and countries around the world who didn't want to allow a medical cannabis patient to engage with a practitioner over telehealth for a myriad of reasons that we can cover on another day. Um, but um, COVID has disrupted all of that, changed that dramatically, uh, which has now allowed us to provide those services across the entire country, east to west, north to south. And um, and I think people have really um, used the crisis as an opportunity to understand that being able to connect with their practitioner without leaving their house actually can be quite advantageous to everybody. And, uh, and so we continue to provide exclusively online services. Yeah, no, you guys are definitely ahead of the curve on that, you know, overnight success, five years in the making, but yeah, um, in Manitoba, yeah, it, right, exactly. right now, like what, six months ago, doctors didn't really like talking to patients over the phone. Not that they don't like talking to their patients, but you know, all fairness to the doctors, they didn't get paid for talking to their patients, but COVID-19 comes along yeah. and suddenly they can bill for a phone call. They can bill for a teleconference and like the clinic I work in right now, it's walking clinic. They literally have people phone ahead of time. And if the doctor can do the, the assessment over the phone, they do, and it keeps everyone safer. So you guys, you guys have been set up yeah. for that since the beginning. Well, you know, what's interesting about that, Trevor, is that, you know, I've now lived in my life in both socialized healthcare in Canada for many years, and then in, let's call it capitalistic or private healthcare in the U S and um, what what COVID has really um, told me that is even in 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 places like Canada, um, you know, money talks and uh, the payors, the 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 provincial, you know, healthcare boards and 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 or private insurance just weren't offering compensation that was interesting to many practitioners. There there will always be reasons to see your practitioner in office, one hundred percent. But there's also plenty of reasons where it can be done virtually and it just they weren't being compensated. And so, you know, in retrospect, I've talked to many practitioners now who say, like, it really wasn't that I didn't want to do it. In fact, I quite like it. I work from home on Fridays now. Um, but, um, you know, financially, I, I, I just couldn't make that work. And uh, and so it just kind of reminds you that, you know, money is still Still, the currency of healthcare, whether we're talking about private or socialized, you know, uh, platforms. Well, we could say money is the root of all evil, but I think the economists will say that we all respond to incentives, and that's pro probably a better Correct. way of saying it. Correct. I like that. Well said. So, how about let's talk about seniors? Uh, you know, again, you guys are well positioned. You know, I'm betting many, many seniors. This is the first time they've ever. FaceTimed anyone, they've ever Skyped anyone, they've ever been on a Zoom call with the grandkids. Seniors are, if they weren't uh, on video conferences before, they probably are now, and you guys are offering a service directly targeting them and their medical cannabis needs. Yeah. So, um, you know, Shoppers um, has done quite a lot, I think, for, for medical cannabis in that... Um, you know, we were attracted to shoppers because um, being so early as we were, the, the the notion that a mainstream brand, and if I, I think I read something yesterday that shoppers was um, listed as the number two trusted brand in Canada after either Canada Post or Costco, I can't remember. But to have such a trusted brand come to market and say, we believe in medical cannabis has, has, has it's not nothing short of revolutionary for those of us who've been in the market a long time. Um, and the reason I raise that is I think that it has accelerated the senior community's interest in medical cannabis. That community has a lot of reasons to be, to be interested, um, you know, given, given the myriad of symptoms that, that tend to be imposed upon um, elderly but um, they also have a lot of reasons not to want to touch cannabis because they grew up in a generation where they were told it was evil. 
Um, and what we have seen, in the, particularly in the last many months, is that uh, a great influx of those 65 and over who are coming to it for the first time, who are a bit anxious about it, who are maybe already compromised and anxious about that to begin with. And so it's not an easy process for them, but they're coming to it because partly because if shoppers says it's okay or it's a good idea, now maybe I should talk to somebody about it. And the first person I want to talk to about it is a practitioner. So I think shoppers has really kind of helped pivot the thinking around cannabis for that generation and others. Um, and so what we noticed was with that huge surge of seniors, particularly during COVID, um, that, you know, telehealth was the, was, was, seniors was going to be the last market that telehealth really attached to just because that group grew, grew up going to see their doctor in person. And so while we can make technology these days simpler and simpler and simpler, it's still technology interfaces. It's still multiple steps. And so we decided, along with shop, shoppers, that to try to reinvent some of our processes, add some more white glove approach to how we onboard seniors, and just make it simpler to get from the point of, I think I'd like to talk to a practitioner about medical cannabis, I can't go to the clinic right now and for the foreseeable future, try to make that bridge to the point where they're actually on the phone with that practitioner much, much simpler, much shorter, and much more intimate, for lack of a better word. We talk to them a lot in that process. And then also try to make that handoff into their next step with, in this case, shoppers, you know, simpler. And, uh, and, and, and that, so that's the genesis of, of the senior care service that we've launched. And that sounds great. So we'll, we'll try to hit on a couple of details. So, you know, I'm, let's make me a 60 year old guy with a arthritic knee. My, my friend says CBD helped his knee. So if I want to get, get assessed, what would I, what would I do? Do I, do I need a, yeah. So, so yeah. So yeah. all we, the, the, we've really kind of cut out, if you will, the red tape and, uh, we've created a, uh, uh, a website just for seniors. Uh, it can be found at seniorcare.hellomd.com. Um, and it can be found in a number of other ways. If you start at, at, at the shopper site, um, you can find your way there quite simply as well. And on that site, you'll find a couple things. One is a whole set of resources, uh, articles, uh, videos that are uh, written and created with the senior in mind. So a lot of introduction to cannabis, try to break it down into nomenclature that, you know, can be understood. Uh, a lot of discussion around, you know, what, what seems to be the, the areas in which cannabis can be most successful. Where do you have to be careful for those seniors who just want to consume content and educate themselves along the way? Um, and then the other thing you'll find is really just a simple one button that you click on. We take a name and a phone number and, uh, and, 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 and very little else, uh, a form that can be filled out in about 15 seconds. And then uh, someone on my team uh, who is hand-selected as someone who we, we, we think is, is, is sensitive to that type of discussion, really helping seniors on the phone, who's happy to kind of yak a little bit and chat a little bit and, you know, just make it friendly, uh, will call you and take your medical history and any other information that we require ahead of time for our practitioner. Um, during that same call, uh, we will get you scheduled for um, an appointment. And then when that appointment takes place, if it's tomorrow at four, you'll receive a phone call again from a handpicked selection of our practitioners who have experience in geriatrics combined with adequate experience in medical cannabis. Um, and they will call, they will reference the information that we will have gathered on your behalf, and they'll take a good half hour uh, to go through your history and, and, and talk about medical cannabis and see where the intersections are. Um, and then from there, we'll take the output of that, assuming that it's an authorization, we'll take the notes um, that the practitioner will have summarized in terms of what they recommend, treatment plans, and we will pass that directly to a pharmacist at Shoppers who will then call you to help you make an order for select products. 
Oh, that sounds great. Now, would any of this be like a video conference Zoom type call where I see the practitioner? Or is it all over a traditional telephone so, or do I have choices? So, um, you know, we, we have plenty of seniors who use our video um, technology to talk to the practitioner. Uh, in this case, the first choice, the default, is telephone. Um, I think that's uh, good, a good because, plan. Yeah, uh, but if somebody really wants to do it otherwise, uh, that's no problem. We can do that. But the default here is, is really, you know, because w- we do do the majority of our consults over video. And the reason for that is, you know, in, in most cases, there are always edge cases, but in most cases, the consult over video is always going to be a little bit more effective for both patient and practitioner because the practitioner likes to see your environment, see your face, see your reaction, see your body language, just get some sense of who you are if they've never seen you before. But in the case of seniors, we pivot that a little bit to acknowledge that video can be difficult and we don't want this to be difficult. And, 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 and the, the, the trade-off is, is that that call is, is going to be longer. And the reason that it's longer is that that practitioner is going to take more time over voice to really get to know you and make sure they really understand, um, you know, clearly uh, your predicament, uh, your situation, and make sure that they make the right call and the right set of recommendations. That sounds that sounds great. I, as a person in my job, as a pharmacist, I'm pretty sure I'm spending at least half my day on phone phone calls with seniors, and yeah, that that is in my head, you know, I'm not trying to downplay it. I have, you know, people in their late eighties who send, send me emails and Facebook messages and want to know why I didn't respond promptly. But the majority of them are want to talk on the phone. They're comfortable with the phone. They're, they're no problem telling you all their ins and outs over the phone. The phone is yeah. something yeah. easy, easy and comfortable with them for them. Uh, what, what, what we found Trevor is that I know this, I am, I'm lucky enough to, to still have my parents in their early eighties and, you know, um, as soon as technology creates a, a, a hiccup of frustration, that emotional kind of charge of frustration, it's over. Because even if we're there hand-holding, okay, I understand, but press this button, you lose your focus uh, when you're frustrated and emotional like that, particularly, uh, I've, I, I, I'm particularly elderly. And, and yeah, so, I was just, um, just going to say, I, I think I'm my, myself as technologically literate, but that's me every time I try to learn something new too. So yeah, I, I don't think yeah, it's specifically you, a senior and then, problem. And then, yeah, but, and, right. And then we, we just can't see the forest through the trees at that point. Cause we're annoyed and these people are doing it wrong and they need to fix this. And, you know, it, it couldn't possibly be that we might made of it may, may have made an error or something. And so, you know, we, we just don't want to impose that. And, um, but to your point, the difference is here is that it, it is a, you know, there's more time involved. I can tell you that, you know, my team who calls to book the appointment, that can be a 20 minute call and 10 minutes, 10, 10 minutes of it minutes of it, we might be talking about someone's grandchildren, right. you know, and, and that's fine. And right now, you know, seniors are a little bit isolated. They probably can't see their grandchildren or haven't in a while. And so if they want to talk for a few minutes about something else, just because they have someone to talk to, that's fine with us. Uh, you know, we want them to be comfortable. Oh, that actually segues nicely into the, especially if you're spending extra time chatting on the phone, um, how does this all get paid for? Do the seniors have to sort of whip out a credit card at the beginning of this? How are we billing provincial um, uh, provincial health authorities? What's what? How does the money move around? So um, um, the only time that seniors are asked for um, money is when they buy products. Uh, in this case, from Shoppers Drug Mart, um, and even then. Um, Shoppers has programs for low income. Shoppers has programs for seniors. Shoppers runs promotions for seniors. So there are opportunities to reduce that expense. Um, and then beyond that, um, you know, there, there, there are not enough yet, but there are certain individuals who, who have some insurability when it comes to, to medical cannabis. Um, and, but that is much more the exception than the rule today. So that's really the only expense. Um, uh, for the senior, 
our services to the senior, the practitioner services are uh, of no charge. No, so that's, that's great. So, you know, the senior, if they spent an extra 15 minutes talking about their grandkids, don't get a surprise credit card bill later. That's all kind of work, worked in already. So basically from, a se- from the senior's point of view, the WebMD services don't cost them anything. Correct. I was trying to say that um, I just, uh, it's Hello MD. Sorry, but I'm sorry. I'm, I'm giggling a little bit because, no, no, that's fine. It's because in our early days, um, particularly when we would go out to try to raise money, people would say, oh, yeah, next step on the stage is WebMD and blah, blah, blah. And that actually wasn't a bad thing because people have heard about them. And it is a similar service in a sense, but very targeted to to um, medical cannabis. But, yes, there, 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 there's, we, don't have a, we don't have a transaction model with patients for anything we do, all of our services to our patients um, uh, are free. Uh, we, we don't. The, the notion of a credit card transaction doesn't really exist in our in our day to day world. Fair enough. And I know this is a little outside your scope, but I'll ask anyway. So after uh, the patient has talked to somebody at uh, Medical Cannabis by Shoppers, this the the product, assuming you know a product's appropriate for them, and then it gets mailed out to them. I assume. So yes, I mean th- that's um, that's one of the nice things about um, the arrangement that uh, that we've built with shoppers as it relates to this 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 COVID world is that it is a virtually uh, virtually virtually virtual experience from A to Z, and that um, nobody needs to leave their home. So they get a call from us, um, we go through that process. They talk to the practitioner, we take care of all the paperwork. They get a call from from shoppers. They help them select some products. Um, this, the senior will have to set up an account with shoppers uh, for medical cannabis to 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 you know buy that product and give their credit card. And then shoppers will arrange, um, depending on where you are in the country. You know, I I know that in Toronto, for instance, they just launched a same day delivery. Um, in other places, it's overnight or two nights, but it'll come. It'll come to their door. Oh, and I pro- if I didn't ask earlier, I better ask now. Is uh, Hello MD available all the way across Canada, or is it just certain provinces? All, all, all the way across Canada. From you know, today we saw a patient from Newfoundland, uh, you know, to to all the way west. I'm trying to think of the most nor- northern. That's definitely the most eastern, and to some extent northern, patient that we see. I'm 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 trying to think of the most northern point that I've seen a patient come through for. Help me with my geography. Thunder uh, so, Bay is pretty north, no? Well, um, for Ontario, it's actually quite a bit south of us. But do you have any like Nunavut? Oh yeah, right. Do you have any Nunavut or Yellowknife or? Or, uh, yeah, uh, once once in a blue moon uh, we do, but um, you know our, our 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 traffic seems to align pretty well with you know population densities across across the country. No, that you know, makes sense. We, 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 you know, so more patients from Ontario than from you know PEI. Um, but um, you know we're seeing. I, I really think we're we're seeing. Uh, a change in, in, in medical cannabis right now. I, I, I'm really, I'm just impressed, I guess. Maybe that's the wrong word, but I've been, I'm, we've been doing this for so long that, you know, in the ramp up to this period, there is no question that companies like us saw patients in different markets who were trying to just be legal about things and shopping for cannabis in wherever there was legal framework. And once upon a time, that was only medical. And today, though, um, you know, in reviewing um, regularly with my practitioners, the, the, the changing nature of the patient is really impressive in that it really feels like we're in the healthcare business right now. And, and that's really rewarding. You know, we're really people are, um, you know, they come into our chat where they might start and, and you know, people have a tendency to just offer a lot of information about themselves because they really are seeking relief. And they, they tell us these things about, you know, why they're here in the different disease states or, or chronic states. And, and so it's just really, really rewarding to see that in Canada, medical cannabis is 
finally, you know, finding its place in the, in, in, in the healthcare um, sphere as opposed to where it was before, which was, you know, a little bit in the middle. And obviously without breaking any confidentiality, but, you know, people always like stories. Can you think of a, a success story that you've run into recently? You know, patient had X and took this and felt better. Any, any of those pop to mind? Um, yeah, I mean, we talked to a patient, um, or this week, um, who, um, you know, had their knee replaced and, um, as a result, just really had a hard time sleeping and didn't want to add any more pharma meds to their, to their cocktail. And, um, you know, they'd never used medical cannabis before and our practitioners helped them to get on a regimen that, you know, was not too psychoactive, but adequate to to bring on you know more regular sleep, and it really helped their healing process because you know if you're healing from big surgery and you're not sleeping, um, it's going to get in the way. And uh, you know the patient was was so rewarded by it. I mean, forget just symptomatically rewarded, just that you know they they thought about cannabis in the wrong way for so long. And I think that's why we're seeing this pivot. But that patient's going to tell that story every opportunity they get to, to their peers um, and proudly. And so that's why you end up with all of these inbounds who say, you know, my friend told me that they tried cannabis or blah, blah, blah. And so I thought I should try it. And, and you know, and that's, 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 that's the best way to move a, a market forward, word of mouth. And I, and I think we're starting to see some critical mass around that. No, th- that's great. Um, so we're getting close to the end. Is there anything that um, you thought I was going to ask or should have asked about Hello MD? That I said Hello MD that time. Good Hello MD. That yeah, that, you got it. I'm getting better. That I should have asked anything. Anything that I missed? Uh, no, I think we um, we covered it well. Um, I, I can't think of really anything in particular. Uh, I, I'm always happy to have the. You know, one opportunity, obviously, to talk about the things that we do. Um, um, you know, we, we have a variety of partnerships in, in, in the country. Um, but in this case, you know, senior care for the moment is, is really a, a collaboration between between us and shoppers. And we appreciate their, their support and, and what they're doing in medical cannabis. Um, but I also, as I said, I... I always love the opportunity to talk about really what's happening in the industry and hopefully continue to move the dialogue forward in a way where um, Canada can lead the world, I guess, uh, you know, apart from being Canadian, uh, which makes me feel good about that, is the rest of the world still really needs a good example, starting with the country that I live in today. But the rest of the world still really needs a strong example um, from the medical side of cannabis to understand that this is, this is more than just, you know, let's implement medical cannabis and then we can do recreational cannabis. Then maybe we can, you know, get some tax revenue out of it. There's an opportunity here to, to add something really, really important to healthcare ecosystems around the world. And, um, I'm hoping Canada continue to, to, to move it forward and, and show the world how it can be done successfully. We're happy to be part of it. So, Kirk, um, that was Larry Lisser and uh, Hello MD. Uh, what did you think? Well, I thought it was interesting. He sort of said the same thing about, um, again, going back to our, our friend, uh, Dr. Turner, that, you know, five years in the business and they're already grandparents. <laughs> meaning, meaning five years, five years in cannabis, you're you're ancient. Um, what are we now? Two and a half. So are we are we mid are we uh, middle age? Something like that. <laughs> uh, I think the only thing, only time that goes faster than cannabis time might be COVID time, where you know a week ago was ancient history. Oh man, I don't know this this COVID time's getting a little boring, but it's uh, it's exciting to watch on the news in the, regards to the. Uh, you know, expecting the second wave. Well, we're not even done the first wave yet, and everyone's talking about the second wave. So, so, so we, t- so Larry did talk about money a little bit. Did that make sense to you, or do you want me to give you? And I, I don't have the answers, but I can give you my two cents worth. No, I, I think that I think what we sort of learned here is that they're providing a service. They're making it easier for people who don't have access. Um, 
It's interesting. I wonder where, I'd like to know where most of their customers are from. Are most of their customers, or, or as they call them, their community members, are most of their community from urban or rural? Because uh, I see this, being rural people, I see this as a wonderful rural uh, service. Uh, in the city, I imagine most major cities in Canada now have a cannabis, cannabis specialist doctor. So I guess, I guess it would be for people who are, don't want to go out in COVID, or it's for people who are the stigma of going to a cannabis doctor. So it's a, it's a very curious interview. I like the fact that, um, uh, that they've been doing this by teleconference for so long. And I also find it interesting. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking 1998. I was in Fort Chippewan, which is in way north north of Fort McMurray. Um, in another past life, uh, as a career, I was I was teaching community health representatives, and I went and visited a nursing station in Fort Chip, up in northern Alberta, and they had teleconference. They had a huge telescreen, and you could. Uh, they demonstrated. They logged into a guy in Halifax, and they were showing me how this new technology was working. So it's interesting how we're still considering teleconferencing as new technology, and I remember seeing it 23 years ago. Oh yeah, it's one of these. And, and Larry touched on it. You know, they are, a, you know, a video conferencing telehealth pioneer, but. First, when I first started in the pharmacy, I uh, I was all excited about the possibility of telecom. So I, I actually bought two cameras just on my own money. They're relatively inexpensive, and I set one up in the Dauphin Clinic Pharmacy and one up in a nursing station in the far-flung suburb of Ethelbert. Ethelbert's a tiny little place, lovely place, but 45 minutes away. And I got a couple seniors to sort of talk to me. Um, instead of over the phone, and long and the short of it, they hated it. This, you know, talk talk to the pharmacist on the TV was stupid. They weren't going to do that anymore. So, you know, it was a short-lived little pilot project. But yeah, the um, the technology for teleconference isn't new, but healthcare seems to be taking a long time to embrace it. And COVID really might be the kick in the pants that uh, that we need. COVID's changing everything, man. I <clears throat> I really hope that it changes some of the things in healthcare, such as funding old, uh, you know, long-term care, uh, min income, uh, all these nursing. As you, as as our many friends get bored of me ranting about the social determinants of health, COVID has just raised all that up. It's it's such a uh, such a nursing. Uh, situation. I mean, pandemics is a nursing science, in my opinion. It's what nurses do. So it's interesting to watch all of this. Um, it's it's nice to be an, a, a, someone observing it. It's just a shame to be living it. So it's it's nice to see the service they provide. Uh, hello, MD. That was a nice interview. And um, yeah, I hope I hope it helps people understand how they can access cannabis easier. Yeah, me too. I I appreciate Larry's time and everybody at uh, Hello MD, and we'll put a few links up for um, even just they they've got some really good I think free info just on their senior care uh, website. So we'll make sure that's in the show notes. Yes, but I was thinking of something else here we haven't done in a while. Okay. <clears throat> Promoting our program. Okay. <laughs> Uh, hello, we're Reefer Madness, the podcast. Yeah, I'm Trevor. I'm the pharmacist. Yeah, I'm Kirk. I'm the nurse. Can you do us a favor? Can you rate us on the platform? Can you give us a little bit of a a little bit of a push? Um, if we've interviewed you and you and you're listening to us, can you push people to the interview we did on you? Um, those people that like us, uh, tell other people, guys. Um, we're very proud of this of this podcast. I think I think we're providing a product that very few people are providing. So let's tell people about it. Um, so are we going to get Renee to pick us some music this time around? Hey guys, I'm back here at the studio. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll take care of the the music for today. 